All right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad. Any good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all, to in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. But most of all, it's a lovely day. It's a day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. So good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Do us a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Hey, shout out to our Instagram audience. Shout out to our Facebook Live audience. Miss Jamika Bogart is rocking with us this morning. Miss Cassandra James Moore is in the house. Hey, Miss Abigail Yates is in the house. Frederick Milner, the baddest praise and worship singer on this side of heaven is watching today. Hey, Miss Crystal is on this morning. Shout out to you. Linda Yates is rocking with us today. Hey, uh, I, I think I said Miss Shamika Bogart, but she deserves a double take. Shout out to her. Hey, my cousin Pooch is with us today. Minister Kim Simmons is rocking with us today. Miss Marucka Yates is in the house. Good to see you. Miss Bam is in the house. Shirley Powell is rocking with us. Hey, but the lovely Kelly Johnson is in the house too. Shout out to you. Shout out to my spiritual daughter, Bam. My wife is on today. Hey, Miss Shirley Powell is in the house. Good to see you guys. Listen, you got to do me a favor this morning. You got to share. You got to like. You got to tag. You got to invite. You got to start a watch party today. We want to touch the world for Christ, all right? Shout out to my cousin Byron Williams, who's in the house this morning. Hey, Mr. LCHS himself. Shout out to him. I believe my cousin is rocking with us. I mean, my brother's rocking with us. Timothy Price is with us this morning. Shout out to you, brother. Love you, man. But listen, let's get ready to get to it. I done gave out all the pleasantries this morning. You know, we gave Shamika Bogart a double shot. I think she need a triple shot of espresso this morning. So shout out to Miss Shamika Bogart three times. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, this is called for saying sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of it in the backyard of Pastor Perry. You know, as a kid growing up, uh, in, in Italy, now, I would always, you know, look at people's shoes and if they had raggedy shoes on, I'd laugh at them. Like, and they got some raggedy shoes. Y'all can't do no better than that. You know, back in the days when I was kids, Converse was king. Not the leather ones, but the cloth ones. Y'all can't do no better than that. Man, your mama them can't get you no better shoes than that. I bet your feet hurt. I bet your feet stink. You know, sometimes little kids were getting the pay less specials. You understand the pay less shoes. Uh, them shoes hurt your feet. You understand? If you don't get a good pair of shoes, they're going to really hurt your feet. So I remember laughing at people because of the shoes that they wore. Even as I got older, I didn't laugh at people anymore, but I always wondered, well, I bet they feet hurt in them shoes. I bet they feet hurt in them shoes. But when I got older and I gave my life to Christ and I'd gone through hell, gone through a divorce, and well, well I'm, I'm, I was in the process of going through a divorce. Separation that took place. I done lost it all. You understand? I done lost it all. Had a car that was probably two years old. And I done lost it. Not that I couldn't pay, but had to give it up in the separation. I done lost it all. I'm at a point in my life, I'm a grown man, and I got to move back home and live with my mama. The apartment that I had was a nice apartment, but I can't maintain and sustain it because <laughs> the relationship is over and I'm struggling. Can't get back and forth to work, so my mama buys me a piece of car. <laughs> Call it a piece of car because it only lasts me about a month. She did the best she could do to help me to maintain and sustain my job, and I done lost it all. I'm at a tough time in my life. I almost go to jail for a crime that I did not commit. I'm not going to detail about it, deep details about it because, you know, some things happened during that relationship and I don't want my children to be embarrassed, so I'm not telling deep details about it. But I almost went to jail for a crime that I did not commit. If it wasn't for an understanding police officer that understood that I could not have done this because he looked at the surroundings and said, I don't believe he did this. That was the only thing that spared me. I could have been in jail for years for a crime that I did not commit, but it's cost of the grace of God. So here I am. I done lost it all. Hey, shout out to Lisa Metcalf. Good to see you. But I have lost everything. I'm down to just $250 every two weeks. That's all I'm getting paid from my job. I'm paying all kinds of child support. All I got is enough money to buy a bus pass for two weeks to get back and forth to work. 
I got enough money to tithe and to give my offering, and I got nothing else. All I got to wear is really uniforms that I got from a job. I got a pair of black shoes. I don't have tennis shoes anymore. I got a pair of black shoes, and my black shoes got holes in the bottom of them. I've been wearing them everywhere. These are my shoes that I wore to church, but these are also my shoes that I got to wear to work in. I done, I done had them shine so much to the point that you can't even put no more shine on them. I'm in a bad state. I'll never forget my man of God. He's going home to be with the Lord now. Apostle Wayne Wallace comes and picks me up. He wants to look at a new building in North Long Beach. And we go look at this new building. Now, mind you now, my shoes got holes in the bottom of them. I'm talking about I'm wearing socks out left and right because I got holes in the bottom of them. It is so bad that I have found a raggedy pair of tennis shoes that I used to have, and I ripped out the soles on the inside of them just to put them inside of those shoes so I wouldn't tear up my socks anymore. I'm bad. I'm bad off. We go look at this place, and we're walking around the place, and we walked up on the carpet that would be in the sanctuary, and I forgot to put those in there. I forgot to put those insoles in them shoes. And my feet are just wet as all get out. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling embarrassed. And I'm in the car with the man of God. He drops me back off at home. I take my shoes off and I'm looking at them. My holes have gotten bigger in the bottom of my shoes. My socks are so wet that I could take them and wring them out and water come out. And I'm sitting on the side of my bed with tears in my eyes. I done lost it all. I don't have nothing. One pair of shoes and they got holes in them. Socks wet. Socks got holes in them. And I'm on the side of my bed with tears in my eyes. And I come to realization. I laughed at people years ago because they, had, they didn't have on good shoes. And some people I seen had holes in their shoes and I laughed at them. It was at that moment when I was sitting on the side of my bed with tears in my eyes asking God to help me. That I, I'm just in a bad situation. Help me. I serve you. I tithe. I, I give everything. I do what I'm supposed to do. In the midst of a crisis moment, I didn't stop tithing, God. I'm still tithing. And it was at that moment that I realized I've been laughing at other people about their shoe game and their shoe situation. But then it dawned on me. Don't laugh at my feet <laughs> until you walked in my shoes. A lot of times we criticize people. We criticize people if they do the right thing. They did the right thing, but they didn't do it good enough. We criticize people when they do the wrong thing. You should have done this. You should have done that. Criticism is throughout the church. People are criticizing people left and right in the church. The church is criticizing people. People are saying, where is the church in all of this? And the church should be doing this. And the church should be doing that. We're criticizing. People are criticizing pastors. If I was a pastor, I would do this. If I was a pastor, I would do that. You don't really know what you would do until you get in that situation. There are people who, who are going through relationship issues and somebody on the outside is saying, girl, if I was you, I wouldn't take that. If I was you, I wouldn't deal with that. Girl, if I was you, I would leave him. Why you won't leave him? Why you won't leave her? Why you won't walk away? And we're just criticizing and criticizing but you don't understand the person's issue and the person's plight. You don't understand the person's story. Hey, Myra, you don't understand none of that. See, it's easy for you to be on the outside looking in and telling the woman that she should walk away from the abusive relationship. But have you ever stopped to think that maybe there's a stronghold that's got her, that maybe somebody has been talking to her over and over again in her head, that he's been telling her that she is nothing and nobody and the devil, the, the, you know, don't no man want you, won't nobody ever want to be with you. And so here we are, we're criticizing. And it's easy for you to say to walk away, but this person is bound. There's a spiritual grip that's got them and we too busy criticizing. Every time I turn around, she won't leave him. She, she, she deserve what she get then. Man, don't nobody deserve to be abused. Don't nobody deserve to be mistreated. Don't nobody deserve to be talked down to. Nobody deserves to be belittled. But until you have walked in somebody else's shoes, you will never understand their story. Don't laugh at my feet until you wear my shoes. So I had to look at that moment and start to realize there's some people out there that are in, in a bad situation, not because they want to, but because things have happened. On the side of that bed, I, I could visualize people being on skid row and seeing that some of them are on skid row, not because they want to, but because of some things that have happened to them. 
my perspective started to increase and change. I started to look at people differently. There are people who are bound by the spirit of homosexuality, who don't, know, who don't want to be a part of it, who don't want to be bound with it, but don't know how to break free, who don't know how to break the strongholds, who don't know how to break the, the chain of, of, of abundance. They don't know how to break it. They don't know how to destroy it. They hear what we say in church. They see us jump, jerk, jiggle, and shout in church, but these people are in bondage. And we've been criticizing for a long time. It was at that moment that I had to make a better choice and look at myself differently. I am no better than the person that's on Skid Row. I am no better than the person who's walking around with holes in their shoes. I understand it because I got holes in my shoes. I understand what it's like to wear holy shoes and your socks are being torn up and when you got to just throw them away, they ain't no good anymore. And you've been walking in your shoes so bad to the point that your feet are hurting. And this is the only pair of shoes that you got. I understand what it's like to when you pull them shoes off, your feet is hurting so bad. And you're trying to put them in some Epsom, some hot water with some Epsom salt in there just to be able to get the feeling back. I understand what it's like not to have no money to be able to buy a pair of shoes. You understand? I, I couldn't even afford to buy a pair of shoes. You understand? I couldn't afford to buy a pair of shoes. Had too much pride to go to my mom and say, hey, could you at least give me something to buy me a pair of shoes? I had too much pride on the inside of me. But then I started to understand how people are feeling. Don't laugh at my feet until you have walked in my shoes. Don't laugh at my situation. Don't criticize my situation. Don't talk down about my situation until you have lived in my situation. See, there are many times we criticize. We talk about the woman that's on the pole, on the stripper pole. Have you ever stopped to think the reason why she's on the stripper pole? For some of them, they're on the stripper pole not because they just like stripping. Some of them, they're on the, stripper pole, on the stripper pole because they don't know no other way to get their bills paid. And they figure that the only thing that I got going for me is a pretty face and a nice body. So let me get on the pole and let somebody pay me for it. Can you imagine the stuff that they got to deal with every day that men gawking at them, throwing money at them, spilling drinks on them, men trying to fill on them, men trying to pay them for sex, and they got to endure. You look back at it and say, hmm, they nasty. They shouldn't do this. But have, what have you done when you got your, when your back was against the wall? When your back was against the wall, what trick did you turn? I'm talking to somebody today. You may not have turned a trick sexually, but you turned some type of trick when your back was against the wall. What trick did you turn when your back was against the wall? See, if you could put yourself in that person's shoes, if you could look at that individual as being you, you would be sympathetic, you would be empathetic, you would be forgiving, you would be the person who's just sitting there and saying, you know what, if that, if, what, what would I be? Why would I react if that was me? You would have some compassion on the individual, you would show some love on the individual, for the individual, and you would have some understanding. What trick have you turned? When you got into some trouble, I'm talking to somebody today, I'm being as plain as I can because there are many of you today, you've turned some tricks today. Whether you manipulated to get some money, whether you lied to get some money, whether you lied on your income tax to get some other money, whether you, you sold something at a much higher rate than what it was to get you some money because you needed this, you needed that. What trick did you turn? See, don't laugh at my feet until you have walked in my shoes. And I look at people sometimes and I have compassion for folks. Because I understand selling drugs on the streets. In my time of selling drugs on the streets, I wasn't out there selling drugs on the streets because I'm trying to get the flashy car. I'm trying to wear the flashy clothes. I was out there trying to sell some drugs because I needed to eat. And, and I needed to be able to figure out a way to feed my family. I couldn't get no job from anybody. Didn't really have the education to do what I needed to do. So here I am. I'm going with the flow. I'm looking at the influence in my neighborhood. They getting money. Her two, her, her, uh, uh, two short song said money in the ghetto, and I believed it. There is money in the ghetto. I started to realize if there was no money in the ghetto, the liquor stores wouldn't be in our ghetto. There, are, there is money in the ghettos, and I'm watching dudes sell drugs and sell weed in the streets. I'm watching them sell P PCP, selling that loop. I'm watching them do it, and I'm watching them be able to feed their families. I'm watching them be able to put some clothes on their kids' back, taking a penitentiary chance, taking a life or death chance just so they could eat. Nothing else is presented to them, and so they got to make a way. And so I joined in. I'm selling crack, too. I'm selling weed, too. I got to eat. My family got to eat. 
My son got to have some shoes to go to school. He got to have some clothes to go to school. I don't know no other way to get here. This is the only way I know how to get here. So I took a penitentiary chance, and I'm taking, I'm taking, a, I'm taking a death chance, and I'm out here all night long with a big old blue bomber jacket on with a belt tied around me. I got pants on with a belt, but I got a belt tied around me. And in that belt, I got a nine millimeter in my back. I got, you know, I got a gun on this side and a gun on that side. And I'm taking these chances out here selling drugs all night long because my mindset is I got to feed the family. But then when I got saved and my eyes came open and I stepped away from this lifestyle, I realized that there was a better way. I realized that God could get me there, that God could change my life, that God could take me to the next level. But I started to realize that there are people who are in these streets, who are in these ghettos, that they don't know if God can turn it around. What they have seen is seen a lot of people in the ghettos who claim to be Christians, who shouting and jumping, and jerking and jiggling and talking about God going to do it. But these are the ones who can't pay their bills. These are the ones who talk about God is a healer, but they the one that's sick. God is the one that can do it, but yet they are the ones who can't pay their bills, don't have no money, don't have no clothes. And we are the ones looking down on them. But in reality, they're looking at you. They're looking down on you. You say you serve a God, but we don't see no manifestation of him in your life. And so now I got compassion on these people because I'm looking at this situation. I was there. I understand why I was there. I watched Kiyas get killed. I watched a friend of mine get shot point blank in the red, point blank range in the head right in front of me. I watched it with my own two eyes over an argument over something that didn't make no sense. I watched it happen. I watched the police plant drugs on friends of mine and, and they in jail to this day because the police did something illegal. I seen all of this and I didn't know at that moment that God could turn it around. I always thought that there's a better way. That when I make enough money, I'm coming out of this. When I get enough money, when I can be able to sustain myself, I'm coming out of this. I did not know that God could do this thing for me. I did not know that I didn't have to wait till I got enough money. I didn't know that I didn't have to take a penitentiary chance. I didn't know that I didn't have to take a death chance. I knew none of that until I got to the point where I had nobody else to turn to. And so I get on my side of my bed and I cry out to God and ask God to save me. And filling me with his precious spirit because I need you, God. I can't make it. I've done all that I know to do, and I can't make it. And I've watched church people criticize people. I've watched people criticize the church. And what it has always been has been the devil. When you connect with God, he doesn't criticize people. He doesn't ostracize people. He doesn't throw people away. He doesn't castigate people. He doesn't get rid of people because of their miss out, their mistakes, and their mess up. He doesn't do that. But what he does is opens up his arms for people to come. So he makes statements like this. Come to me all who are uh, 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 laden and heavy. Come to me. Come to me all those who are heavy, laden, and burdened. And he says, I'm going to give you rest. He opened up his arms wide for people to tell him to come on in. Doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Homosexuality, come to me. Dealing with drugs and alcohol, come to me. Strung out on dope, on the pole, stripping and doing whatever you're doing, come to me. Prostituting on the street, come to me. He's calling everybody to himself because he is the one that can take care of people. The abused woman, he's calling her, come to me. I can heal you of the abuse. The man who's doing the abusing, he's calling him, come to me. He's opening up his arms wide to bring those people to him. And what we do on a consistent basis is criticize. We ostracize, we throw people away, and we have no sympathy for people. When I started looking at a young lady in the hood one day, was messing around with this guy. I know this dude was about 20 years older than she was. And I could just see the disdain look on her face that she's with him, and I knew what she was waiting for. She got three kids, she can't pay her rent, and she can't feed the kids. So now he becomes the sugar daddy for her. And you can just see it. She don't really want the guy, but in her mind, this is what she got to do. Everybody else is looking at her like, look at her. What's she with this dude talking, about, about, talking bad about her? But I'm looking at her from the perspective that this is all she feels that she could do. She's trapped up in a place of darkness. And she feels that the only person that can help her is this old dude right here. He ain't got nothing to really bring to the table. He ain't satisfying her. Uh, but, but at least he's going to kick out some money to help her pay this rent. He's going to give her some money to help pay for her shoes, buy her kids some school clothes, put some groceries in her house. He using her, but she using him. And I'm looking at this situation, and I'm like, 
I know what she's doing it for. But everybody else is criticizing while I'm feeling sorry for her. The woman that goes on the Maury Povich show and she got kids and don't know who the daddy is and she thinks he's the daddy. And she really believes in her heart he's the daddy until the DNA, DNA test come back. And she flips out. See, I don't laugh at those people. I feel sorry for those people. And the reason that I feel sorry for them is because that child had to be embarrassed. Thought he was his daddy. Thought she was his daddy. I mean, thought, 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 her, his daughter, her, thought that was her daddy. And come to find out, it is not. And the child has to live with this rhetoric that the devil has embarrassed the child from birth because of something that the mama did or something that the daddy did. I've watched men who know that that was their child that didn't show up to help, didn't show up to do anything, wasn't there, didn't pull off nothing, didn't show up, said, I, you know, didn't buy no pampers, said little things like, uh, you, know, you know, I'm gonna see what I could do when the mama called for something. I, well, Jojo need this, well, I'm gonna see what I could do. Well, we already know that's cold that you ain't gonna do nothing. We already know that that's cold. So watch now. So I look at these situations and I realize, what trick did I turn? But my back was against the wall. What, what trick did I turn when I didn't know what to do? Who did I manipulate when I didn't know how I was going to make ends meet? Who did I take advantage of when I didn't know what I was going to do? When I was out here in these streets and didn't have no place to live, I manipulated a lot of women. I just need me a place to stay. Doesn't matter what you really look like at this moment. Don't care how many kids you got. I just need me a place to live at this moment. So, so I'm going to sweet talk you because you easy picking. You insecure. You easy picking. Let me go and sweet talk you. And I won't be able to go on in there and live in your house. You understand? I might be able to be in there for a couple of months, six months top, and, 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 until I find me another spot to move on to. But right now, I, got, I can't be on these streets right now. I got, I got to be able to get me a place to stay. I manipulate it. <laughs> and I'm wondering how many people have you manipulated? How many tricks have you turned? How many people have you taken advantage of when your back was against the wall? See, don't laugh at my feet until you have walked in my shoes, until you put on my shoes, until you wore my shoes. If you don't know what it's like to wear shoes with holes in them, then don't laugh at the person who got them. Don't laugh at the person who got to wear the same outfit every day because he ain't got nothing else. Don't laugh at the person. Until you've been in that situation, you'll never know what, it, know what it's like. Don't laugh at the person. I'm talking to somebody today because we look down our nose at people. We criticize people. We ostracize people. But we go to church and dance, jerk, jerk, jiggle, and shout and quote scripture. But yet and still, that person is there. We look down our nose at them. Hmm. Don't laugh at my feet until you have walked in my shoes. Here I am. These are the only pair of shoes that I got. A pair of black dress shoes, and I'm wearing them every day. Everywhere I go, I got to wear these shoes. I don't have nothing else to wear. I done wore these shoes out so bad to the point that I got two or three holes in the bottom of each pair. Not only do I have holes in the bottom of them, but my heels are worn down, and they warp sided and I'm looking bad. I'm going to church every Sunday. I'm going every Tuesday night. I'm the one who's carrying the pastor's bags. I'm the one who would drive his car for him when he needed to go somewhere I'd drive it. When he needed somebody to read scripture for him, I'm standing with the microphone on and I'm tore up from the flow up. I didn't have no money to even buy me no food to eat and sometimes he would stop and buy food for me to eat, put some money in my pocket, put a few dollars in my pocket for my kids. He had compassion on me, and he looked at my situation. He didn't look at just where I was at that moment. He saw my potential. See, the very person that you're looking down your nose at may be the person that, need, that you need to help you later on in life. The very person that you criticize, the very person that you have thrown away, the very sister that you have talked about, the very brother that you have talked about, the very auntie, the very uncle that you have talked about, the very person in school that you have criticized, ridiculed, and ostracized may be the one that comes back to your aid later on. The Bible tells us 
that here they have been talking about, talking about Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman. But the reality, that was not what they were talking to him, talking about Moses about. And they were talking about Moses now because Moses is being used of God. And they can remember how Moses lived in this palace and we were enslaved and God using him. What about us? We still knew the, knew the Hebraic law. We did traditions. We knew this. He did none of that. He was in the, he was in the palace. And so can you imagine they looking down their nose at Moses? It's the same way people go out of town and they come back to their hometown and, and maybe they won't stay at your house, but they go stay at the hotel and you have an attitude with them because, oh, they, they, they don't even want to come stay at our house. I, they too big to stay at our house. They too much to stay at our house. They're not too big to stay at your house. They ain't too much to stay at your house. They want some privacy. They want to stay in their hotel. You don't know what them and their wife want to do. You don't know what they want to do. You don't know how they like to live. So listen to this. Just because you grew up with them doesn't mean you know them after they have gotten grown. So people look down at them. Oh, they, they think they're better than everybody. Won't even speak to anybody. But did you speak to them? Did, did you speak to them? So here they are looking at Moses here. He high-minded. But God doesn't see him like that at all. When they criticized Moses, and now all of a sudden, here God now calls all three of them out to the tabernacle of the congregation, and he says to them, were you not afraid to speak out against my servant Moses? And he says to them, for you, I may speak to you in dark speeches and in dreams. But with my servant Moses, it is not so. I speak to him mouth to mouth. In other words, he says, Mouth to mouth means that my mouth is his mouth. My heart is his mouth, his heart. My face is his face. He said, Moses has seen my similitude. In other words, he's telling them, I got a relationship with you. My relationship with Moses is on another level. And so he says, I don't talk to him the way that I talk to you. And he says that the Bible, the Bible makes the point to say that Moses is the meekest man on the face of the earth. So they were not upset with Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman, but they was challenging his humanity and his character. And God comes along and says, his character is not in question. You're upset with him for another reason. And so God now has to deal with him. As soon as Aaron realized he, done jack he jacked up and messed up, the first thing that he does, he turns to Moses and says, my father, forgive me. I repent, forgive me. He doesn't ask God to forgive him, but he turns to Moses and asks Moses for forgiveness. And the Bible says now Miriam is smoked with leprosy because of her, her disrespect to the one that God has chosen. So you gotta be careful that you don't look down your nose at people because the very one that you criticize, the very one that you challenge, the very one that you ostracize is the one that's going to come out and help you. When you study the scripture out and you look at that in the book of Numbers, you see now Moses now stands up to God on the behalf of the two people who've been talking about him. Moses stands up to him. I often wonder, why would God call Moses out to the tabernacle of the congregation? Why would he meet with all three of them and Moses did no wrong? Then I find out after Moses, when Moses now stands up to God and says to God, you can't do this to them. You can't do this to them. Forgive them. So he brings Moses out there so that Moses could plead their case so that he could have a legal loophole so that he would not have to kill them. You got to be careful that you do not criticize people because the very person that you criticize may be the one who's got to come rescue you, may be the one that's got to show up and give you your last cup of coffee, your last cup of water, may be able to feed you. I mean, you on your deathbed or you on your bed can't feed yourself. You incapacitated and that very person that you criticize and ostracize and belittle got to be the one to sit by your bed and feed you, got to be the one that, that take you and clean your mouth when you can't clean yourself, put you in the tub and bathe you change your clothes for you. See, see your nakedness. You got to be careful until you walked in my shoes or laugh at my feet. I got a different mentality when I deal with people that I don't know people's story. I don't know where people have come from. I don't know why they end up in that situation. It is my, not my job to condemn them. It is not my job to belittle them. It is not my job to tear them down. It's my job to build them up. It is not my job to point the finger. Why is this 14-year-old girl out of here smoking weed like she's doing? Why is this 14-year-old girl out of here sleeping around with dudes who are 25 and 30 years old? Why is this 14-year-old girl? Why is this 15-year-old girl? Why is this 16-year-old girl 
that had more men than the 91 freeway had written on it. How, 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 how was, it ain't my job to criticize this child. It's not my job to ostracize this child, but it is my job to encourage this child that, yeah, you've been out here. And the reason that you're doing it is because you're really trying to find love. You, you, you don't like all these men riding on you. But this is where you are. This is where you are. So, so it's our job to encourage people. The Bible tells us a story in the Old Testament that God, that, that we were like, when we were in the world, we were like people who, 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 are, who your mother had just given birth to you. And when she th saw you, she threw you away in the field. You still got the afterbirth around you, still umbilical cords uh, tied to you, and you throw it out in the field. You ostracize, you're thrown away. And the Bible says, here come God walking by and seeing you thrown in the field with the umbilical cord still attached to you and the afterbirth, still, you're still covered in the afterbirth. And here's what God did. The Bible says he, he picked you and I up. And guess what he did? He cleaned us up. He, he picked us up. He cleaned us up. He cut the umbilical cord. He wrapped us. He loved us. He nursed us. He fed us. He cared for us. He clothed us. He did all of that because he couldn't walk by and see you in the condition that you were in. If you were to stop and look at your life, if you were to stop and think about your life, you can remember some times when you were thrown away, when you've been through some stuff and it almost seemed like you weren't going to be able to come out and life was almost over. But somehow another God showed up and when he showed up, he showed out in your life. Sometimes we have a tendency to criticize and ostracize and we don't know the person's story. I made up in my mind, I'm not criticizing the homosexual. Because God can turn their life around too. Too many testimonies of people who've been bound by homosexuality and God turned their life around. So I don't criticize, I don't ostracize because I know if God could, get, God could turn an alcoholic around like me, he, he could turn them around. If God could do it for a dude like me who had more women than he can count, if God could do it for a dude like me, he, he could do it for them. If, if God could take a person like me who was out there in these streets, didn't have no problems with fighting somebody if I had to, didn't have no problems with pulling the gun and shooting somebody if I had to, didn't have no problems with that. If God could do it for a person like me, he could do it for a person like them. And so my mind says it's completely different. I don't know their story. It ain't my job to know their story. It's my job to love them. It's my job to care about them. It's my job to show them that God cares. It's my job to build them up. We have to take the opportunity today to build people up and stop looking down our nose at people. Folks go through tough times. Some people give up on life because maybe their mama died or their daddy died and they give up on life and they're stuck like a truck in the mud and it's almost like they're in quicksand and they're constantly sinking in this quicksand of life and there's nobody to rescue them. Somebody is they're crying out for help and nobody can understand their cry. Nobody hears their cry and they've been crying out for a long period of time and nobody is, is reaching down to pull them out. We, 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 we got we to gotta just look at people the way God looks at them. How does God look at them, Pastor? The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God, God loved them enough. He looked at them from the perspective of love and went to the cross for them. I, I don't even look bound down at the person who, who smokes weed and goes to church. Hmm. I'm not, she's smoking weed and up here in church, but what was you doing late night? See, they saying we can smell. Yours we can't see. Let me say it again. They saying we can smell, but yours we can't see. Well, what you doing? You understand? What is you doing? You, you, you like the people who caught the woman in the act of adultery. And you bring her to Jesus, wrapped up in sheets and all. Because, you know, Christians are the ones who criticize the most. So here you are. You like a peeping tongue. You sitting there watching her involved in the sexual activity with, with the man. And you take her with sheets and all, bring her to Jesus, but you let the man go. So you're pointing out her sin. Her sins are many. Her sins are many. But you forgot that you got issues and you got problems too. So Jesus now is sitting and he's writing on the ground. Nobody really knows what he writes because the Bible doesn't tell us. But theologians said that he wrote their names down, the ones who brought her to Jesus. He wrote their names down and listed their sins. And the Bible said, he says to them, well, he who was out seeing cast the first stone. And all of a sudden they dropped their rocks and there's not one of them standing there because their sins was many more than what she had. I wonder how many people today who are watching me. That you've criticized people, you've ostracized people, you've belittled people, you put people down. 
but you have forgotten that you got issues and you got problems too. If we were to take you with your sanctimonious self and number your sins, your sins would outnumber the person that you're talking about. They smoking weed past. They lick into that rap music. Well, what is you doing late at night? Why is you with that woman's husband? Why is you with that man's wife? Why, why is you doing some stuff that you ain't supposed to be doing? Why is you doing that? You can't point the finger at somebody else until you look at the mirror. Until you wore my shoes, until you have walked in my shoes, don't laugh at my feet. I'm talking to somebody today. This is a heart check matter today that we got to check our heart. Is the person who's supposed to be saved and sanctified that's out there smoking weed, should they get rid of it? Should they stop it? Of course they should do it. Because what they're doing is they're, they're tainting their testimony with God. Because the moment you start talking about God is this and God is that, God is love, and this is what the Lord has done to me, you nullify your testimony because everybody is looking at you and saying, I can smell it on you, brother. This ain't of God. This is not what God is saying do. This is not what God is telling you to do. But until then, it ain't my job to criticize. I got to close with this. I learned something from my pastor that I took to heart. He said, if you give somebody some advice and they didn't ask for it, it's called criticism. So he says, I never give advice to anybody unless they ask me for it. Now it is not criticism, it is advice. I took that to heart. I can see a person doing wrong. I ain't going to say nothing to him about it unless they ask me. Now I got a legal way to tell you what's right and what's wrong. But until then, I'm going to keep loving you. Until then, I'm going to keep praying for them. Until then, I'm going to keep saying, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, girl, I love you. Good to see you. I'm going to keep doing that because the Bible tells us love covers a multitude of sin. Love conquers all. Love cares for all. Love is caring. Love is sharing. Love is kind. Love transforms and changes people's life. Love went to the cross. And if love could go to the cross and change people's lives, what more could he do for the person who's out there? You don't know why the person is smoking weed. You don't know. You don't know why the person is drinking one every now and then. You don't know. You don't know why the sister come home and had a long day of work and say, I just need me a glass of wine right there just to relax. You don't know the day she had on the job. The pastor, they could do something else. Well, you could do something else too. You, you could do something else too. So don't criticize them until you can understand them. Don't laugh at my feet until you walk in my shoes. <laughs> That's my time right there. I pray you were blessed this morning. Shout out to my Auntie Catherine Press who's on today. Love you, Auntie. Good to see you. Hey, Miss Miss Donetta Hines is rocking with us today, girl. You go. Good to see you this morning. Hey, Jacoy Green. Jacoy, you the, you be the bomb, brother. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much for being on. You and uh, I don't know if Dorian is watching today. He probably come back and watch later on. But you need to connect with Dorian, man. You got the raps. He got the beats, man. Y'all can do some things, man. I'm telling you. So connect with him, man. Y'all y'all may be able to turn the world upside down. <laughs> Shout out to you guys, man. Mother Sandra Jones is on today. Hey, Miss Sandra Coleman is rocking with us today. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being on today. I love you guys. Miss Gloria Turner, got to give you my high five, baby. You know, it's a quarantine season, so I got to give you a virtual high five. <laughs> good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. Listen, if I missed you, you know I'm going to go back and say good morning to you, all right? I'm going to go back and say good morning to you if I missed you, all right? I don't know if Miss JL is rocking with us today, but uh, maybe she is. So shout out to Miss JL if she's watching today. Love you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you. I really do. Uh, man, I think I think I saw heaven on today. Shout out to heaven. Good to see you. Shout out to Clint Powell, who's on today. Good to see you guys, man. Hey, my cousin, Tonic Stacy is rocking with us today as well. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for being on. I, I, I heard you calling your husband last night. <laughs> Good to see you. Jacoy is rocking with us, man. <laughs> so good to see you, man. But listen. Hey, I got to pray for you today. But listen, need you to do me a favor. Don't go anywhere. I need you to get your seed in the ground today, all right? I got to give somebody their day today. Don't go anywhere, but let me pray for you first, all right? Let me pray for you first, and uh, we're going to give somebody their day, all right? But don't forget, get your seed in the ground. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. I think I saw Miss Irene Holmes picture up there. So shout out to Miss Irene. I think I saw Mr. James Jackson picture up there as well. Shout out to him as well. Good to see you. But listen now. I need y'all 
connect with me, all right? Connect with me, share, 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 like, 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 tag, 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 invite, 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 all right? So please do that for me today. But get your seat in the ground. Go to the website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seat in the ground, all right? Or if you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the Cash App. Cash App is the dollar sign uh, Pastor C. Perryman. Again, the dollar sign Pastor C. Perryman. Get it in the ground. If you want to sow directly to my wife, it's the dollar sign Pastor Sophia, all right? So let me pray for you and then I'm giving somebody their day. Don't go anywhere, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. For your grace and your mercy today, I thank you for your love and the kindness and the tender mercy that you have shown every one of us. I thank you, Father, for just blessing us beyond measure today. Help us, God, to be people of love and people of compassion. Help us to be people who forgive. Help us to be people, God, who love. For you said in your word, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. In your words that our lips should praise you. So, Father, I thank you for what you did for us. You said without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. So I thank you for your death on the cross. I thank you for it today. Now, Father, open up our eyes of our understanding that they may be enlightened today. And I give you praise and glory for it. Now, Father, we lift up the country of beliefs. I pray for my town, Itabina, Mississippi, and I pray for the Delta as a whole. God, pour your favor out on these places. Release your anointing on these places to remove burdens and destroy yokes. God, restore the countries again. Restore the cities and the towns again, oh God. I speak the blessing over Belize. I speak the blessing over Itabina, Mississippi. And I speak the blessing over the Delta now in the name of Jesus. And God, I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Got to give somebody their day to day. Hey, today is Jacoy Green's day. Shout out to Jacoy. It's your day, man. Whatever you want, you get. Whatever you need, get supplied. It be your day today. So shout out to you, man. Good to see you. Miss Gloria Turner, it is your day today. Whatever you want, you get. Whatever you need, you, you get supplied. It is your day today. So shout out to those people today. It is their day. Oh, and Mother Sandra Jones, it is your day today, Mother Sandra Jones. Whatever you want, you get. Whatever you need, get supplied. It be your day today, all right? So show them some love. Show them some appreciation today. It is their day. But don't forget, get your seed in the ground, all right? Hey, shout out to Miss Bambi, who's on as well. But get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website at Kingdom Life Faith Center. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Or you can go directly uh, to our cash app and get it in the ground that way, all right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for letting me give you my Easter speech. I appreciate y'all, all right? Hey, love y'all. We'll see y'all again tomorrow. Don't forget, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of it in the backyard with Pastor Perry. All right? We love y'all. And keep us in your prayers. We love y'all. Be blessed in Jesus' name.